Hello YouTube, it's Jeff Hale here. I'm in my fishing and hunting fly tying room. This is where I stash all my stuff. I had to make a video in here today because <clears throat> family's out in the other room and they're making a bunch of racket, folding laundry and putting dishes away and doing the stuff I probably should be doing. But today I wanted to talk about blackmouth fishing and king fishing with jigs. So it's blackmouth season right now. And shortly afterwards, it'll be king season. And one of the effective ways to fish for those uh, Chinooks is with jigs, jigging. And it's actually a lot of fun. Um, so I want to talk about a couple things. Um, the first kind of jig I want to talk about is this jig right here. And this jig is called a crippled herring. And it's one of my favorites. And I like to fish these when I'm fishing light jigs. So for example, one ounce, one and a half ounce, two ounces at the most. And these work great if you are uh, fishing in shallow water, or a lot of guys in the Strait of Juan de Fuca will get their boats right up against the kelp, and they'll use spinning rods, and they'll use light line, like 12, 15 pound test, and they'll pitch these jigs right into the kelp and jig them back, and they'll catch monster Chinook. Um, when you're fishing for blackmouth, most of the time you're fishing vertically, straight down in deeper water. Um, seems like we catch most of our blackmouth in, in much deeper water, whereas you can catch kings in 30, 40, 50 feet of water. Um, <clears throat> so, one thing I wanted to point out is when I use a jig like this, I do a modification. And this is um, an important modification. If you notice, when you buy the jig, it'll have a split ring, and then this siwash hook will be directly attached to the split ring. The problem with that is, if you look... It twists a little bit, but it won't twist in a 360. And it's real easy for a fish to get a hold of this if you and twist the hook loose out of its mouth. So what we do instead is I take the split ring, I attach a barrel swivel, and then I put a siwash on. And generally it's a higher grade siwash than what they come with. I like to use gamakatsu or I like to use owner siwash hooks. And sometimes I will, here's a little trick, sometimes I will even take a pair of pliers and I will barely, barely bend this hook to the left or the right without messing with the integrity of the hook because I want it offset just a little bit. I feel like my hook sets are better if my siwash is offset to the left or right just a little bit. So that's a crippled herring. That's a great jig. Um, another jig that I like to use is a P-line jig. And this one here is like four or five ounces. And as you can see, I've done the same thing. I got the split ring. I got the barrel swivel. I got the sidewash hook. The problem is this jig is now starting to get heavy enough to where when I hook a fish, uh, a Chinook or a blackmouth, and I get him close to the surface, and it's right before you net him, it seems like that's the most dangerous time, they'll start to do this. They'll open their mouth, and they'll sh go back and forth, right? Do I look funny doing that? Ah, ah, ah right? That, that's what they do. And what happens is, is this is a heavy enough jig where this thing whips, and it can literally rip the jig right out of their mouth. And so you'll see a lot of guys, when they get that fish up, they'll stick their rod tip down and they'll keep that jig down in the water so that the fish can't sling this back and forth and pull it out of their mouth. But it happens. So how do we come up with a way to avoid this? Well, I want to go back and I want to talk a little bit about mooching. And when guys fish for, guys and gals fish for blackmouth or chinook, there's like three main methods. They'll mooch. They'll use a downrigger or they'll do jigs. And um, back in the days when people mooched, and I still do, mooch and troll with cut plug herring, uh, in the very beginning they would use a fixed banana sinker and then let's say like seven or eight feet leader. And when you mooch, you drift and you drop your herring down to the bottom and you, then you reel it up 20 feet and you drop it back down and then you reel it up and that herring spins down, it spins back up and it's actually <clears throat> a really fun way to catch a Chinook. Problem is, if you have that fixed weight and you get that fish up to the surface, same thing. They start whipping their head back and forth. And now you got that weight seven or eight feet out, flipping back and forth like this. And I've seen it so many times. That hook gets ripped right out of the flesh of the fish's mouth and you lose the fish. So how does that apply to jig fishing? So let's take a look at this particular jig. So this is a P-line jig, the same jig that I just showed you, except it's been modified. And I have to give credit where credit is due. This is not my idea. Um, those of you who know Steve Freeze, big shout out to Steve. Steve's a really amazing salmon fisherman, and he's also one of my favorite human beings on the planet. And I, Steve showed me this. 
And I actually believe Steve's friend showed Steve this. So let's take a look. So here's a P-line jig. Notice what I did to the bottom of the jig. I took the eye and I bent it out at like a 45 or a 90. And then I took the top of the jig and you see I bent the eye out at a 45 or a 90. And then I took mono and I ran the mono through the top eye through the bottom eye and I attach it to a bead and I have two sidewash hooks. And some guys fish two sidewash, some guys fish one sidewash. You could just easily fish one. I've even seen guys tie a mooching rig, double hook mooching rig behind this bead and fish that. So they'll have two hooks like you would use when you're using a hoochie or a cup like here. And we tie this on, let's say a 40 pound test leader and we have a barrel uh, not a barrel swivel, but a bead chain swivel. And this is great because these are pre-tied. And guess what? When you hook a fish and you get them to the surface and they start swinging their head around, well, this thing slides. And it doesn't completely solve the problem, but it takes away a lot of the leverage that a fish can use to make that jig jerk the hooks out of their mouth. And so this is a pretty cool technique, especially when you're using a heavier jig. When using a lighter jig, like an ounce, one and a half ounce, I don't worry about it. But when I go to these heavy jigs, I do. So um, I just wanted to um, say that uh, I hope that helps you out. Um, black mouth season's here. It's been kind of slow for us. I'm hoping it'll pick up. We're going to go out and try it in the streets of Juan de Fuca. Pretty soon, king season's going to be here. Jigs work great for kings and black mouth. But guess what? If you live in Florida or you live on the East Coast and you use jigs, this technique can also work. There's no reason why you can't take your jig, whether you're using it for grouper or tuna or whatever it is, and bend the eyes of the hook and use a, a model that will allow this thing to slide up and down the line and it'll allow you to have a greater um, hookup ratio and land ratio. So I hope this video is helpful for you and I wish you luck out there.